Welcome back to Dialogue with Debbie. Today we're going to have another interesting program for you to listen to. Our first segment is Community Services. I decided that I wanted you to hear about what happens in our food banks or in our soup kitchens. Now lots of churches may do this, but you know we have a couple big ones. We have the Sylvan Lake Food Bank and Janet Griffith will be with us for that. We have the Red Deer Soup Kitchen and Adeline Warner will be with us. And we have the Lacombe Food Bank. And you all know Millie Snow. She's very famous here in Lacombe. And we're going to talk to all three of them about what they do. After that, we have Compassion Ministries. Now, you may not have heard of that one very much, but it usually has a bit of ADRA, a bit of soup kitchens, and that kind of thing in it. We have David Guzman with us, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what's happening, or has happened, in the past year. Now, he's a pastor too, and he decided that it was time for him to hand off Compassion Ministries to somebody else. And we're going to introduce you to the newest member of our volunteer group of people that work with us in the conference. So Enoch Oduru will be introduced. You will only hear him. You will not see him because his camera did not work. But, you know, it'll be fascinating to hear where he's from, what he's done, and you won't want to miss it. The next one will be Pastor Wayne Williams, and he, of course, is the Executive Secretary of the Alberta Conference. He's actually my boss, so you better listen to him this time. He's going to tell you a little bit about our department and our HR um, officer who is fairly new. The last one for today is going to be Troy McQueen. Now you know him as Troy McQueen from the Alberta Conference office, but the last couple of years he's changed his clothes and he's been down at camp. And so he is in charge of Foothills Camp and you won't want to miss what he has to say either because it's very interesting. So listen carefully today and we will be back tomorrow. Enjoy! I decided that we would talk to the food banks and the soup kitchens that we have going on in our conference. Now I'm going to ask everybody to introduce themselves and tell me where you're from. So let's start with Adeline Warner because she does the soup kitchen somewhere. Let's let's hear where. Hi, my name is Adeline Werner, and I run the Red Deer Soup Kitchen in Red Deer. I'm actually from Lacombe, but it's my pleasure to run the Red Deer Soup Kitchen. And how long have you done that? About six and a half years, I think. Oh, wow, that's quite a while. Good, and let's go to Millie Snow. Okay, I'm Millie Snow, and uh, I'm the manager of the Lacombe Community Food Bank and Thrift Store. And, and how long have you done it? Um, let's see. <laughs> Maybe it would be over 10 years. Oh, that's a good long time. <laughs> and we have Janet Griffith with us too. How long have you done it and where are you located? I'm in Sylvan Lake and I've only done this for the last six, seven months. October. But how long has that facility been open? The facility's been open for a long, long time. I can't give you the exact years, but it was started in the basement of our church by Edna Matterfeld, who is no longer with us. And it was really small. And now we've expanded to a, a two-room facility. Then, well, let's let's talk a little bit about um, how it works to have one of your community service projects. Do you have church backing? Um, I think I think it would almost be necessary. So, Millie, do you have church backing from a church or several churches for your facility? We actually are owned by the uh, um, College Heights Church, but we have churches in Lacombe that back us probably as much or more so than that church. We have 
I could name them, but I, I probably won't. But there are several, several churches in Macomb that give us donations that help us um, physically and that are always there for support. Always good to have volunteers, right? <laughs> Adeline, what about you? Okay, well, we actually have uh, pretty much all of the Central Alberta Seventh-day Adventist congregations supporting the Red Deer Soup Kitchen. So that would include Sylvan Lake, Red Deer, Lacombe Community, College Heights, Pinoca, Bentley, and Rimby. Now, how do they support you? Is it through monetary, physical? What do they do to help you? Actually, all of the above. Monetary, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, physically, uh, each of those churches takes at least one or two meals per month in terms of heading the meal up or coordinating. Them. I coordinate the meal with them, but they run the meal. So, for, for example, Sylvan Lake does the first Sabbath and the first Thursday of every month. Okay, I'm going to come back to you and talk about what you do actually do there. But Janet, um, do you have a facility, a church facility that that backs you guys up? Actually, we do. Um, we rent a building from the town of Seven Lake. Um, the Seven Lake Seventh Day Adventist Church is our board, and the rest of the church in the community are there and they help in various ways, either financially or with product or with volunteers. Um, the businesses in town are the same. The citizens are the same. It's amazing how the community steps up and helps out the food bank. We are blessed. So, okay, so do you just have a food bank or do you have furniture and clothing and what do you have there in Sylvan Lake? Mm -hmm. Good question. We have a food bank, but we also have started a furniture bank that is being used by the community as well. It's not as well known, but it is there and we do access it from time to time. Oh, well, that's good. I'm... So if anybody wanted to donate, could they drop things off that are in really good condition and that kind of thing? Absolutely. Is there somebody there all the time or is there a contact that you would have to get in touch with? There's a contact that you'd have to get in touch with for the furniture bank. For the food bank, you just call the food bank number. And uh, we're only there one day a week. Um, but you can always leave a message or you can contact us through Facebook. Oh, okay. There's lots of different ways to contact you. Now, Millie, you've had the one in Lacombe for a long time. And it's also a thrift store. I've never been over there. I really need to come and see. So tell us what you do there besides handing out food. Okay. Um, the thrift store and the food bank are two, two separate. Um, they're separate. Oh, okay. The, the food bank right now is open. The thrift store has been closed since the pandemic started. Okay. But, and reopening again next week. But um, the food bank is for anybody that needs food. Uh, the thrift store is for any, anyone. Anyone can come there and shop. It's a, it's a shop. It's, a, it's a, actually just a regular thrift store. And then we have a garage or shed where we keep furniture and that is part of the thrift store. They can buy furniture there too. And do so you take so donations also? We don't. Do we take donations? Right. I mean, uh, yes. people come and just donate? Yes. Yes, they do. They, they're very good. They're very generous. And how do you get all the food products? Do you do drives to get food? Um, what do you do? The food comes in many different ways. We have three major uh, grocery stores in Macomb, and each one of those contribute. We have um, schools when we're when schools are open and everything is running normal. We have school drives. We have churches that put on drives. Different um, businesses. The Rotary puts on a drive usually every August. And of course, Christmas we get the majority of our food in. Well, that's good because then the community is very supporting also, which is necessity. It's very much a necessity. Yes. 
Now the soup kitchen, that's a little bit different. How do you get food to supply the soup kitchen, Adeline? Okay, well, some of my food comes from the food banks. That would be Millie's Food Bank here in Lacombe and also the Red Deer Food Bank. Uh, some food does get donated otherwise, although that would be a very, that would be only a portion. Uh, then there are still things that I have to actually buy out of whatever money we raise to keep our doors open, basically. And how do you raise that money? Well, <laughs> generous individuals for the most part. Um, obviously, each of the churches that are involved in, in our ministry are, you know, have committed to giving us some every month or, or you know, a certain amount per year. Um, but really the bulk of our budget comes from individual, very generous individuals, really. That's amazing. I, you know, it's, it's hard to fathom that you, you just do this on faith most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time, it, you know, it, we're lucky if our, our bank looks like, oh, we can stay open another two months. Yay! Oh, that's yeah, very it, scary. That's, that's <laughs> a, it, it's an amazing feeling if I can see six months into the future with my budget. So it, it really is it is a really a faith walk. <laughs> so during the week, how many meals do you do during the week? Well, we do every Thursday and Saturday evening, and then the first two Sundays of the month, we have a brunch. So that would be from 11.30 to 12.30 on a Sunday. Wow, that's a lot of work. How many do you feed at a time? Well, that has changed, of course. Oh, yes. But before COVID, before okay. COVID, how many did you feed? Again, according, depending on the time of the month and how close it was to any, any type of... Uh, income anybody might have gotten but i would say at the peak times we could serve anywhere from 150 to 200 but wow. that's gone down since covid started but you're still open now during covid yes. yeah, we are open our dining room is not but we are still serving a hot meal at a makeshift window that we have built so oh. we still send a, a full meal Everything we used to serve before, it all goes into lovely little packages and into a bag, and it's hot, and it's uh, the full meal deal. We give it out of the door to whoever whoever comes to the door. So tell me what you would you would serve at, at a night meal. Well, Saturday is, is pretty predictable. As a rule, it would be soup, uh, a salad, some sort of bread, and some sort of dessert or fruit or something of that nature. Uh, sometimes pizza buns along with our, with our soup, depending on the group. And uh, uh, Thursday nights, we usually mix it up a bit. Um, the home community loves to do spaghetti. <laughs> so they get spaghetti supper at least once a month. And uh, sometimes we have pierogies. Uh, Thursday night meals are quite nice. Uh, at, all our meals are quite nice. Let me let me rephrase that. But <laughs> and then Sunday mornings that we typically do some sort of potato, egg, um, fruit salad, muffins. Uh, again, a very nice meal. Before COVID, we were doing waffles as well with you know fruit sauce and whipped topping, and that got a little complicated. Picked up the glimpses, which is the College Heights Church newspaper. And I'm just going to read a couple of the things that were written because there, Tina Zazaluk is a co-editor and she wrote about the Red Deer Soup Kitchen recently. And these are some of the things that people have said about the soup kitchen. Thank you. You're keeping us alive. You guys are so nice to us. You have the best food. Why do you have so much patience with us? There's a difference in attitude here, and you treat us like people. You have a mission, don't you? We do. We have a mission, and we've done our best to continue serving our population, given the restrictions we have. I, I do feel that COVID-19 has limited, uh, to a certain extent, it's more than just a meal that we serve. 
and unfortunately not having the dining room open limits is the amount of other help that we and support that we give and that i that i feel very concerned about in the long term uh, however i still do have an outreach coordinator that actively goes out looking for our clients uh, when he's there uh, he's built relationships with many of the clients finding out what their needs are so we're actively trying to find out what specific needs are for specific clients and still meeting those needs that's simply amazing. I'm I'm blown away with hearing it. And I know that the Lacombe Food Bank and Thrift Store has a mission also. The Sylvan Lake, is it called Food Bank? Yep. The Sylvan Lake Food Bank does have a mission also. And you all have clientele that need you and that need us as a church. And I thank you all for being willing to share with me today some of the things that you do if there's anybody out there that's listening and wants to donate, I know that all of these people would love to have you help them, whether physically or financially and prayerfully too. I'm sure that you would all agree. So thank you for being with me, Janet, Millie, Adeline. We appreciate your work and we thank you for it. And maybe we'll check in next camp meeting and see how you're doing. Thank you all for coming and being with a part of me, my little program here today. Thank you. Thank you. And bye. Bye. Welcome back to another segment of the program for today. You know, I have a couple of gentlemen on with me now, and you know one of them, and you don't know the other. But let me introduce Compassion Ministries to you. Compassion Ministries is something that David Guzman, who lives and, and pastors up in Fort McMurray, has been doing for a couple of years. So let me ask, welcome David, and ask him what Compassion Ministries is. Well, Compassion Ministries, uh, first of all, thank you, Debbie, for having us and inviting us to sit down and explain um, to the brethren this. Uh, want to let you know that Compassion Ministries is the actual umbrella ministry that covers now uh, any Alberta conference, uh, ACS, Alberta uh, um, Adventist Community Services, ADRA, and all the other ministries that would do with serving the community. Uh, Compassion Ministries is that umbrella. OK, so okay. any any programming, for example, or any any service that you do in the community would fall under this particular umbrella, Compassion Ministries. OK, okay. well, you know, I did interview <laughs> the food bank in Lacombe and the soup kitchen in Red Deer and the Sylvan Lake Food Bank. So those are part of Compassion Ministries also. Is that correct? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, anytime they're going to do a, a programming and they need some financing, a lot of their forms that need to be filled out has to go through um, this particular area, this particular umbrella. Okay, oh. so yes, yes. Okay, now let me introduce you to somebody else, but you don't know him because he's brand new to Comp Compassion Ministries, and that's Enoch Okar Odier. I'm going to let you, you introduce yourself. Thank you, David. <laughs> My name is Enoch Oduro. I'm not a pastor. My associate pastor for my church is Enoch Okwaro. But I'm Enoch Oduro. I'm not and a pastor. Just, just to clarify that. That's uh, OK. As long as you have some experience, you're great to help us out. This is a volunteer ministry position, and you have taken it on. So tell us about yourself. OK. I'm a member of the West Edmonton SD Church, currently serving as one of the elders. Prior to that, I was I live in Winnipeg for about 20 years, and I worship with the Henderson Highway Church and serve there as an elder too. And when we decided to plant a church, a new church in downtown Winnipeg, which became the Winnipeg Central Church, I led the church plant. So I have been involved in the church as a volunteer for some time. My development background is in international development. And I work in international development for about 30 years. 
started with Cameroon's International Institute, where I manage a program for CEDA, Canadian Transit Development Agency, and from there work with the Lutheran Way Federation for 18 years. And in the course of the 18 years, I work on several projects and visited so many countries in Europe, Asia, and Africa, countries like Ethiopia, Zambia, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Malawi, Kenya, South Africa, visiting projects and partners. I also visited Bolivia and Peru in South America with our partners, and Asia, Philippines, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Thailand, uh, and India, visiting projects and meeting with partners. I also have attended several conferences in Europe, countries like Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland, Ireland. So I, I believe I have traveled extensively. And I also believe that with my background in international development, I see a, a room to contribute to the work of our conference and to the work of our local congregation in terms of trying to address felt needs in our communities as local congregations. Wow, <laughs> that was that was very extensive. I didn't realize you had been in all of those countries and um, you've been around the world and in development for a long, long time. Thank you for telling us about your background. Now you're so new to the conferences, Compassionate Ministries here that you're still learning, is that correct? Yes, actually. I was asked to serve, I believe, at the end of March, beginning of April. So I'm still learning about the <laughs> ministry. And I should mention that you're only uh, on the audio section of this interview today because uh, you're new and, you know, things are happening and, you know, people have computers and that kind of thing. But sometimes the visual doesn't come out. So we welcome you through audio only. We still have to meet you. I have not met you yet. I have talked to you and emailed you, but but I know that David knows you. Isn't that correct, David? He's helped yeah, on some no, of your projects? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I've known if there is any individual that I can affirm and you know, in his testimony and what he does for the Lord, the love that he has for the Lord, the work for the Lord, is Brother Enoch. As a matter of fact, I've known Brother Enoch, I think, since, uh, what would you say, Brother Enoch, 2000 and maybe about, five? About 96, 97. Nine, nine, <laughs> yes, yes, 97. <laughs> you know, um, when I was baptized at West End Church, mm. West Edmonton Church, um, there with Pastor Eustace Williams. I've known uh, Elder uh, Enoch. He's always been faithful. He's always been hardworking for the Lord. I even, when I went to serve at Mansask, I had the opportunity to actually be in the same city and serve in the same city where he actually had the privilege of planting that church. So if there's anybody that I can tell you that we have the right men for the job, this is the man for the job here. Okay, well, he's been very consistent. Good. Very, very good. We're glad to have you on board, Enoch. Thank and you. David, you're trying to just back out a little bit because you have a church that is demanding too, right? Demanding in the fact that you have lots of things going on in it. Well, you know, like any other pastor, I don't think I, I can say that um, I have a church that's more demanding than any other <laughs> pastor. Um, the one the one thing that I can say above all the other pastors, though, is that for some reason, uh, Fort McMurray within the last five years has been, you know, hit, hard, hit very hard with several crises and emergencies. Um, you know, this year, uh, the fire season started quite strong. It started with about eight or nine fires, um, including some that were very close to Fort McMurray, south and north of us. And so praise the Lord that the fires actually were dwindled down. The rain has really helped. The cool weather has really helped as well with that. And so uh, northern Alberta has been blessed in that sense this year that we haven't had to worry too much about the fires. But I can tell you this is if you do want to work in ministry, and you want to be an active uh, pastor or or individual in the church, there is no better place to do it than Northern Alberta. I'll just oh. be upfront with you. You, <laughs> you are given an opportunity uh, to be creative. You are given an opportunity to make sure that um, you can figure out and discover new gifts 
that the Lord has in store for you as a as a minister in the in the community. Um, so at the moment, yes, you're right. The church, the church is quite busy uh, in the sense that um, we are serving the community. Uh, uh, we've turned the entire church. I wish I had the, the images for you, the pictures for you. Uh, we've turned the church into another distribution center the way we did in 2016 with the wildfires. Uh, we've been serving now for quite some time um, out of the church. We have to actually take more precautions this time around, though, because of COVID. And mm -hmm. so we we are sometimes the lineups outside, um, you know, tend to get a little bit long. But people tend, you know, those folks that lose a little bit of patience, they do come back, you know. Um, and so we serve one at a time right now in the church. Uh, the church is, is is not a massive church. It's not a big church. It's may, you can maybe fit a hundred in in attendance on a good Sabbath. We have about we have about 140, um, but the church is really made for about 115 people okay and wow. so it feels like you're in a sardine can sometimes <laughs> when you get a good sabbath right and so the church is quite small we have to actually make make sure that the measures are in place in case somebody comes in and wants to uh, serve themselves right now we are uh, distributing food clothing um you know personal care kits things like that anything that they need. So. Now this time it's because of the flooding that was recent, like in March and April, right? That's right. That's right. The the floods, uh, the floods just, my goodness, they they just added and compounded the crisis um, in northern Alberta. Uh, northern Alberta right now um, is it's really going through a traumatic situation in a sense that you had a major economic crisis at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. Then COVID hit. Uh, and then on top of that, you had the floods. And so while the floods, uh, the pictures, the images that uh, of the floods are no longer seen on the screen, um, the crisis is still very much there um, because families are still feeling the side effects. Um, so how do you ahead. get supplies to hand out and to give? I know that the conference office has a, um, a van. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a big van that yeah, was taken yeah. up there on by a fifth wheel. It's like a fifth wheel. And they had they had put it out in the parking lot here and had people donating to it so that That's when right. somebody took it up there, it was up there, you could use it. And I know it came back <laughs> empty. That's right. But they had how do you so you had some supplies. How do you get the rest of the supplies that you might need? Well, um, you know, we praise the Lord that uh, there are individual members such as um, Dorothy, okay, mm -hmm. Dorothy also at the church, at the conference there, who are passionate about this kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she took the initiative to make sure that uh, folk can come and, and fill that trailer. And it's the an emergency response trailer that the, the conference has. It yes. was actually, um, it, it's partly put together by Adra and as well, Adventist Community Service, North America uh, wide. And the, the funds were put together by the three entities, I believe, and this trailer was bought, which is actually a blessing because most most churches don't have this capacity to serve. Right. I, I really want to emphasize that. And my, my hope, my goal, my vision was, uh, while I was the Compassion Ministries director, was that we actually got, uh, would uh, acquire a bigger trailer and better means to respond. Uh, why? Because this is where you now get to touch the hands of people. This is where you get to touch the lives of people. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to get transparent with you. When I graduated as a pastor, I used to think evangelism was doing the evangelistic series and preaching the sermons and all. But I can tell you this right now, um, in the last 10 years, uh, being with people, walking with people, and serving the way the Lord has allowed me to serve them and through Compassion Ministries, I can tell you that evangelism is really more effective when you actually get down to the nitty-gritty and work with people at their level. Okay. And I'm sure Enoch can attest to that also because he's done it around the world. He may not have worked for an Adventist organization, but still, that's what Jesus would do is work with people that are marginalized and in need, right? 
That's that's right. And as a church, we have to find ways to address felt needs in our communities. If we are mm-hmm. going to be relevant, we have to know our communities so that we are addressing some of their needs. It's good to invite them to come to our church, but I think that if you are following the example of Christ, we have to be with them, see what they need, what they lack, and how we can help them, and then invite them. So I know the conference gives out a small um, amount of money every year. It's called the Compassion Ministries Project Grants because people do request for them. And there's things on there like the soup kitchen gets some, bags of love gets some, um, personal care kits, mental health, depression, lifestyle, seminars. There's several different things that get the the small amount of budget that we can provide from the conference. Yeah. And That's all right. those things have to go through you, Enoch, to, to they, they go to you and then they come to the conference office for um, appropriation of time, of money. So we know that this happens. We're quite glad that it happens. I'm sure that uh, everybody was at camp meeting in previous years has seen that van, that re- disaster response van. I can't even say it, but um, it does go out. I know that the youth have used it in the streets of Edmonton or in the streets of Calgary. So it is in use. It's something that uh, is noticeable and recognizable and it works well. I only have about a minute left. I'm going to ask Enoch if you have any goals because you're so new, you're not even sure what kind of goals to have. But do you have any goals for the next year? Well, I have a committee that I work with, Compassion Ministry Executive Committee. Right now we're in the process of developing a strategy plan. And the key goals that we have, uh, five of them. One, we want to map up the ACS infrastructure in the conference so that we can get a better sense of what the local congregations are doing and see how we can help them to be more effective. We also want to equip our local congregations to be attentive to public safety and emergency needs, and also emergency preparedness, so that if there are emergencies in the local communities, at least they can be the first responders, address it, and if they need help, approach ADRA or the conference system. So these are some of the things that we are hoping to accomplish. Good. I'm I'm glad to hear that you've got, you're, you're on the road to getting really involved. And we thank you. Our time is up, but it's been fascinating to talk to both of you. And welcome, Enoch, and farewell, David. However, you, you won't be you. quitting because you are very busy up there doing what you always yes. do. Yes. So thank you for being with me for this short period of time so that people can understand a little bit more about Compassion Ministries. Thank, thank you, you very much for inviting us. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you again. Bye-bye. And bye for now. And welcome back. It's always good to have wonderful people to talk to on these little chats that we're having this week. Today I have Pastor Wayne Williams. Pastor Wayne Williams is the secretary or the uh, vice president of administration at the Alberta Conference. Welcome. Thank you, Debbie. Um, And it's good to be here. Uh, And it's wonderful to have an opportunity to to share with uh, the members of this great uh, conference. Yes, it is. And, you know, camp meeting is always fun. And I usually get you to talk to me, but not live. Well, live as in face-to-face on an interview. So this is just a little bit different for us. Um, Let me ask you a couple of things. Sure. What's What's the responsibility of the Secretariat Department? And what is your role? Well, the... Uh, responsibility of the Secretariat Department is varied. It's very wide, very varied. I remember initially when um, I was uh, asked to serve in this capacity, I I um, did some research. I started reading and um, checking all the different um, organizational websites to find out a little bit about the position, and found that um, there was no definitive. Um, job description per se, but it seemed to be 
uh, a little bit of everything as long as it is uh, helping the officers, the organization, and there are some key things, however. There are some key things such as um, archiving, archiving of data and, and, and documents um, that we may have that are very important um, from legal cases, from meetings, uh, plans, uh, different things, historical um, um, information that we have. And so they have to be archived and then also retrieved um, on demand. And so that comes out of uh, the Secretariat de um, Department, as it were. And um, there is, of course, resourcing, uh, researching. If there's anything that the administration needs uh, to put their finger on, then I would do some research along with the team and uh, produce some answers for. Um, also, uh, policies, procedures, bylaws, um, legal issues come across uh, my desk as well, um, coordinating uh, meetings uh, for the uh, officers as well, making sure that things are heading in the right direction, assisting the president, um, in particular ensuring that um, he's good and everything is running well and we work as a team. It sounds like you're very busy. Yes. Do you have anybody yes. that helps you? I mean, this is a lot of work. You help me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I admit I do. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're, you're my right and left hand. Um, oh, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes, of course. And, 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 of course, I have several departments that I oversee. Um, I have volunteer ministries that include all uh, a platform of, of uh, prison ministry family life, men's, women's ministry, and, and prayer ministry, uh, several uh, areas, uh, as it were. Do you uh, ever sleep? Say again? Do you ever sleep? Oh, um, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know education is also under you. Yes. So you, you oversee what they do. Yes. And give them direction if they need it, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And education is, of course, uh, um, in a period of volatility even now, uh, but they're handling it so well. Rhonda and her team, uh, Brent, uh, and the principals and the teachers, they are doing a stellar uh, work uh, with the education department and, and all of the issues that has come out of COVID and the schools transitioning from brick and mortar to a virtual uh, at-home uh, remote uh, education. Uh, fortunately, of course, we had PACES as, as a platform that we can use the modeling from PACES to uh, help to move our work and transition our schools and teachers uh, and the energy of education online. So that has worked out quite well. Also, um, you have um, the Human Resource Department, which has seen some changes of recent. Right. Uh, Vicky uh, had... Um, um, found uh, a connection and an interest uh, and a job opportunity in BC, uh, working in a similar capacity, but working with um, her native uh, uh, people uh, there. Uh, and I think that's very exciting for her. And she, she really was uh, excited about this. And so this presented a very great opportunity for her to work uh, closer to her home and to her people. And so that's pretty amazing. Uh, in her stead, we have uh, hired Jennifer Williams. Um, I'm checking my family ancestry to see if we're related. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's many Williamses. <laughs> many Williamses. Um, she is um, uh, coming in from Berman University, from the office of the president, um, uh, Lauren Agri, and um, she worked with him as uh, his administrative assistant and uh, working in various capacity to assist the president's office. So we're very happy she is uh, to have her. She's very uh, uh, keen and, and she uh, has, has a very effervescent personality. It's great to have her on the team. I think she's, she's made a good fit and she is quite capable as well. So we're very happy to have her. Yes, and I, I look forward to being in the office with her when we all finally go back because yes. it will you you 
are right close to us in our offices and you'll probably hear us laughing a lot because we do yes. work a lot but we laugh so that's, right. that's a good thing too <laughs> that's right. That's right. and i'm just going to mention one little thing that i do to help you you know the churches bring in many many speakers yes and so i get the opportunity to invite them and yes, we always if they don't work for our organization in some form we always vet them so we know what they have as a background or what yes, their philosophy yes, is. Yes, yes. And you get to do that because I, I like to talk to them, but I let you do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you do such a wonderful job um, with that. And we really appreciate that dealing with uh, uh, all of the service requests and coordinating all of the speakers and uh, making sure that our appointments are on point and just do everything. <laughs> you, you pretty much do everything for us. I really I help you. I help you. But let's go on. Let's move on now. Um, what kind of membership do we have in the conference? Well, at present, we have um, uh, membership wise, uh, we have. Um, uh, I'm going to give you an approximate figure at this point because it's still fluid. Um, we have. Um, 12,240 12, uh, members to date. And um, of course, if you were to compare this uh, over the last several years, we have seen a growth on average of about 1.8, 1.7, sometimes up about 2% growth per year. Um, as, as it were in uh, 2014, we had 1.05 growth. Uh, 2015, 0.49 growth, but then it jumped back up to 0.48 in 2016. And then I'll fast forward to um, 2018, 2019, it went up again to about 1.6 um, or so percent growth. And what those uh, figures actually look like is uh, in 2014, we had about 10,000 members, 2015, 11,000. Uh, 113, 2016, 11,353, um, 2017, 11,647. Let me jump forward to 2019. We had at that point uh, 11,942. And then in 2020 here, we have 12,240. Um, so you can see that we have had uh, good growth, constant, steady uh, growth all thanks to the Spirit of God and, 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 and his usage of our uh, very capable pastors, uh, which we think very highly of, and teachers, uh, because the education system and the church work hand in hand. And of course, um, you know, working together with this uh, stellar team to get as much of evangelism done and soul winning done and reaching uh, uh, those individuals in the sick and dying world and God has been blessing, the Spirit of God has been moving, and we're very excited about that. Yes, and and I I was going to say the pastors have a major role along with the teachers, and the numbers are only as good as as what comes into eAdventist. So the, the clerks and the pastors in their churches are the yes. ones that actually input that, and what, then we can reflect on it. So it's a good thing that they do that on a regular basis so that we can always yes. have the most up-to-date numbers. Okay, let's go on. I know as session is in the horizon um, in 2021, um, we have town hall meetings. Tell us, tell us about the town halls and what they do and how they come about. Yeah, town hall meetings is a natural progression of the fulfillment of uh, our previous session. Any session that we have, uh, Town hall meetings is part of the uh, structure of um, fulfilling the mandate from um, our sessions. And um, what that really means is that we uh, have regional town hall meetings so we can um, help to, to, to pull the churches in those regions together. All the, the members can come out um, and it's a great time for several things. It's a great time for interaction and communication uh, from each member of our uh, great conference to have interaction with the administration, the office, and all the departments of the conference. 
um, to share their concerns, to voice their opinions. It's, it's a platform for interaction and accountability. And I mm -hmm. think that's very important that we have that so that we can get a feedback and um, to get a, a sense of uh, how things are and, and, and how we can improve and what direction we can take and things we can change. And it's a very important uh, process and um, we welcome that. So you've done two of them and then COVID hit. So there's yeah. one more to do before, well, whenever we can, I guess is, is what well, we're saying we have, now. We have two more actually. Oh, we have two more. Yeah, because we didn't fulfill Grand, Grand uh, Prairie. Oh, right. We were right. right in the process of that um, yes. region. And um, so we actually would have two to accomplish and uh, then Central, of course. Yes. Uh, so we hope to resume uh, <laughs> as soon as we can. Yes. So, you know, but um, right now it's, 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 it's put on hold. Okay, I'm just going to, you know, we've only got a couple minutes left. And so I would like to know um, if there's any memorable things that have happened since you've moved here. Your family had to come from Ontario and and I know you went to school here, I think. But, yes, um, you know, it's different when you come with your family. Have you had any memorable things? We've only got two minutes left. Only two minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, several things have, have happened, so much so. Um, I, uh, with the family has transitioned in and everybody settled in and uh, doing fairly well, thank God. Um, and we're very uh, happy with um, the environments that Alberta has provided for us and the people that we've met. Uh, we've had a great and tremendous experience. So that is a great thing to, 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 to fall back on in terms of memory and things that have come out of that. Um, in my personal um, uh, ministry here, uh, traveling to, to and fro the province has shown me how beautiful this province is and how beautiful the people are. Um, seeing the different environments and seeing the, uh, the blending of our churches, the diversity of our churches. It's, um, it's, it's very warming. Even when I went as far as Yellowknife and, and some of these other areas, especially Yellowknife, I really enjoyed that to uh, see the diversity that was up there as well. Um, um, I actually had some pho, some Vietnamese soup in Yellowknife. <laughs> And it's very interesting, and I found that to be among uh, some of the best that I've had anywhere that I've had fall. And uh, you're a foodie, so you would know. There, there you go. <laughs> and um, of course, just to meet the people, um, the sheer the sheer joy that that brings, and and to be able to spend some time with the pastor and his family, I like to uh, uh, go out with them, sit with them, and uh, talk with them, and let them know that we appreciate them and to listen to what they have to say as well. So I not only meet the members, but also sit to sit with the pastors and occasionally get to visit if there's any critically ill members in the region or in the area. And, um, you, still still, from and you still go out preaching because you like to preach. I do, I, do. I still do <laughs> preaching. I did a week of prayer for uh, College Heights uh, Church, which was, uh, which was just amazing. Mind you, it was in the dead cold of winter. It was when we hit minus 40 and plus, or minus. Wasn't it, wasn't it at 6 a.m.? See, <laughs> it was 6 a.m. <laughs> so I was up bright and early, uh, you know, uh, from 5 o'clock. And what a great team that was, and what a wonderful experience it was. Uh, these are great memories for me. Um, and I thank God for the opportunity to serve. It is a humbling and it is a rewarding experience. And I, I really praise his name for this opportunity. Well, our time is up, but I thank you so much for being with me today and telling everybody some of the things that happened in your department and some of the memories that you've gained since you've been in the Alberta Conference. Thank you again for being with me. Thank you, David. Bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>
it's very green and pretty. Wow. Virtual camp meeting means that we're not all down there right now. Well, it is a quiet place here. <laughs> I bet it's very quiet. <laughs> do you see animals? Because there's no other people around to bother them. Well, I do. You know, in fact, I, I see lots of uh, deer. I've seen uh, a porcupine just a couple of days ago. And uh, lots of uh, moose and coyotes. And uh, believe it or not, I have video of three cougars now. Are you kidding? Yes. That's actually kind of scary to me. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yes, Are they out in the forest? Friends. Well, the video of the cougars, we suspected there were cougars here for uh, a little while now. And I put some trail cameras up and uh, we recorded them walking by the lodge. Oh, that's even more scary. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe they wouldn't be there if all of us virtual people were there. Right. But, um, yes. Oh, my word. That No bears? Uh, no bears yet. <laughs> they have all the animals, let me tell you. Yes. Well, let's talk a little bit about Foothills Camp. Um, I know that we've canceled camp meeting, of course. And mm. did we, what did we do with all the summer camps? Well, the summer camps also uh, have been postponed, and uh, the the staff that uh, we were looking at hiring had been notified that uh, for this year we're going to be uh, holding off on camp because of COVID. So, so does that mean that if they are students at Berman next year, they would be hired for that summer camp again? I suppose uh, if you know we had them on our list uh, to hire this year, they would definitely be on our uh, interest list for next year. Uh, the the thing is, with students, um, you know, things change pretty quickly in their lives, and uh, so we're we're sad that uh, we were able um, not able to be able to run with uh, the programs this year. Because it it does take a lot of students to to do the programs that you normally do. Um, let me talk about some of the other functions that happen down at camp. There's things that happen all year round, I'm assuming. Oh, the camp is a, a very busy spot. And uh, this year, before the, uh, for the month of March, we were looking at our calendar and we had uh, the camp was booked pretty near every weekend up until the middle or the end of November. And we also have groups that come during the week, which is uh, outdoor school groups. And uh, so... Oh. Yeah, so it was a it was a very packed calendar. Yeah, I forgot all about the outdoor schools that probably are are well. School is almost out now, so that's not happening this year at all, is it? It is not. But uh, I understand that they're also doing a virtual outdoor school event, so that'll be something uh, kind of interesting for the kids to be able to participate in. Well. I, I know that things have changed in education a lot, but you know, down at camp, you say it's very, very quiet because you're the only one down there right now. Yes, that's correct. And uh, because of uh, the COVID, we had to uh, lay off some of the camp staff, temporary layoffs. And uh, so at this point, it's been me. I've been uh, keeping, trying to keep up with the mowing and the whippersnipping. <laughs> You know, there's, there's a, lot a lot of grass to mow. There's a lot of grass. I was yes. just looking at it. Well, you and you can't be moving too much. You're going to make me dizzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I, there's always a lot of grass to be doing yes. down there. But it's a beautiful place, regardless if the grass is long or not. So you you right. enjoy it. it. Is. Yes. Um, so as we were saying, there was lots of things that happen after summer camp too. There's lots of groups that come in. And so yes, that is yes. a bit postponed for this year too, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so August 15 is our reassessment date. And uh, so we'll be seeing at that time what we're allowed to go forward with. Uh, so I need to mention back in March, the health inspector who is responsible for our area, is she's from Olds, she called and she said, uh, Troy, I want to make sure that the camp is shut down. And we said, yes, we had shut it down, you know, just at that time. And, uh, you know, so we need to do a reassessment. Um, like I say, August 15 is our reassessment. And at that time, we'll look and we'll see what we are allowed to offer as uh, regarding to programming. 
Oh, OK, so there might still be some things that happen late August or early September, all depending on what the health inspector says and the government. Yes, exactly. So like you said, that that the people that usually work down at camp are not there right now, only temporarily, though, until they can be back and doing their normal jobs. Exactly so, right. Yeah. Is there somebody down at camp right now that um, lives on campus or close by that that is there in case of something happening on the site when you're not around uh yes yeah, so we have a retired pastor who is uh at the camp house and, okay and um uh -huh. so you know if something happens he does uh he'll text me for me i'm here most days and uh, so this would be maybe evening time night time if something were to happen we do have that connection and we do have uh one of our uh, staff who are currently laid off but lives up the road and uh, he is also available you know if something were to happen to to keep in communication well that's good because you never know down there with those cougars and things oh my word um <laughs> you <laughs> this is scaring me now um you did hire a couple of positions down there that that are permanent and it and i know they're laid off right now or not working but um introduce them to us okay so we've hired a full-time cook and that is heather harrington and before i tell you a little background i'm going to tell you who else we hired we hired kay grassa and she is going to be doing uh, summer camp programming and uh, so kay and heather uh, are people who i know from way back and uh, when i was um, about uh, 16 years old i worked at pugwash camp in the Maritimes and uh, Kay uh, around that time was the camp director so oh my. she yes yeah, she, her and I we got to work together back then and Heather was the camp cook and so Heather has uh, many years experience 20 plus years working at camps and Kay has 20 plus years as camp director so uh, we're very pleased to uh, have them as part of our team here at Foothills Camp. Okay, so when things wrap up and we can get going again in August or September, we're ready. Right, we're ready to go. <laughs> we want, we're itching and ready. <laughs> You're wanting to do it. Yes. Okay, there's some things that um, that we talked about earlier, you and I, and there were goals that you want to do at camp. What kind of goals do you have? Well, you know, there's things, uh, always things that uh, we you know, need to complete in regards to maintenance, but there's things that also, you know, we'd like to see improved. And uh, one of those big things that uh, is on the improvement list is uh, some of our sidewalks. So we're really hoping that once we, you know, we can get up and running again, uh, that we can get some of our sidewalks repaired. Uh, before the, uh, you know, COVID uh, pandemic hit us, we had just finished painting and um, putting in new LED lights in cabin block E. So we're, we're excited that that has been completed. So that's a defo, definite big improvement. Is that uh, the first group of cabins that has been done or the block that has been done? It's the first block of cabins, yes, okay. that, that uh, we've gotten complete. And, are the rest uh, yeah, we're happy. Are the, are uh, the rest yeah, so, yeah, so our, our goal was to get uh, E and F. So the boys cabin and the girls cabin Okay. Uh, boys village and girls village is what we call it during summer camps and so we completed the girls village and uh, the next would be the boys village and that was our plan was to move into that uh before uh, we were you know having to, to shut things down oh okay so that's one of the goals and i'm sure there are more because there's always goals of things to do at camp right. <laughs> yes. so, uh, so what's the guess... one you know, one of the other things is uh, for those who walk on the sidewalks, not only does the sidewalk need repair, uh, there's a, a fat water fountain that uh, we have along the sidewalk. And one of the things on the list for this year was to replace a fountain uh, or two. And uh, so we're hoping that maybe that's still a possibility for this year. Uh, one of the other big things, and, and a lot of people may not recognize that, that this is a problem, but we have a river, Little Red Deer River, that runs right by, right through our camp. And every year we have more erosion. This year we lost another half a foot of our road that goes to Sherwood. 
And so we're in desperate need of getting our new road put in place. The current one we feel is actually becoming quite dangerous. So uh, let me just go back a bit. I didn't remember that you had to go over a road to get to Sherwood Forest. Yes, yes. So if you follow the, go down the hill at the camp yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, you follow, go towards the river where the baptisms used to happen at the river, uh, there is a road that follows all along the side and that's where the river is really eroding away the road. Oh, okay. So do they maybe need to change the place where they go across or do another bridge or how does that work? Uh, so we've actually cut in a new road that is uh, just basically cut through the field, through the trees. And so that needs to be, uh, you know, put in with gravel, put in proper with gravel and uh, making sure that it's passable by vehicles. Oh, that sounds like a huge project, all right. And it's, not one it's that a you big job. in the winter. <laughs> um, well, and I know we were hoping, we were hoping yeah. to have this time, you know, this time to get it done before summer came but uh you know it's okay we'll we'll definitely get to it as soon as we can yes yes and another one that i know because i know it went through the administrative committee was was something about your equipment and how it's stored okay yes yes that's a good point we have we have a lot of great equipment at the camp and yeah we you know we need equipment to get a lot of the jobs done to keep things uh up with maintenance and uh, unfortunately, we don't have a place to store the equipment. A lot of it is out in the field, in the grass, uh, in, the, in the weather, in the rain, the snow. And so we are really trying to get some covered storage. And uh, so that was an excitement uh, to you know, be able to say, hey, let's look at moving forward with that. Um, obviously, right now, we're just holding off, but uh, that is on our list. Okay, so you know our 15 minutes is just about gone, if you can believe that. We wondered what we would talk about for about <laughs> 15 minutes, and it certainly has gone by fast. But you know, we're glad that you're down there. We're glad that things are, are being maintained so that when we can come back, it's going to be beautiful as usual. And um, we're certainly glad that uh, everything is good down there. Any other yes. thoughts before we say goodbye today? Uh, no, we're just uh, looking forward to seeing everybody. Yeah, I bet you miss us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Troy, for being with me you, for Debbie. this short interview. And we thank you for being down there and continuing to keep up the camp for us. And we will see you soon. Thank you, Debbie. Take care. Okay, bye okay, for bye -bye. now.